The financial markets play a crucial role in our country's economy. I want you to ask yourself, how many millionaires do you know who have become wealthy by investing in their savings accounts? This is a video you can't afford to miss. I will explain what the stock market is, how it works, and most importantly, why you should take advantage of it to secure a better financial future for you and your loved ones. Full disclosure. This video is for educational purposes only. And, it should not be taken as a financial advice. In simple terms, stocks, also known as equities, represent a fractional ownership in a corporation. Therefore, when you buy a share of a stock, you become part owner of that corporation. A well-functioning stock market is crucial to economic development and have become an essential component of a free market economy. It allows businesses to quickly acquire funds from private investors instead of relying solely on banks. It also allows individuals, like you and I to invest in the economy and hopefully beat inflation. In fact, more experienced investors can even profit from periods of high inflation as well. The stock market refers to public markets that exists for issuing, purchasing and selling stocks. Stocks can be traded over the counter, or on a stock exchange. However, most stock trading nowadays are conducted online. Investors can take advantage of the stock market by purchasing or selling stocks. Unfortunately, in the United States, only 56% of Americans own stocks. In 1989, middle-class citizens owned 15% of all household equity holdings. In 2016, they only held 5%. On contrast, the wealthiest Americans generally have most of their wealth invested in stocks. Here is an interesting fact. When the stock market is on the rise, and economically stable, we call it a bull market. If you wonder why? It's because bulls tend to attack their foes with an upward thrust of the horns. Therefore, symbolizing optimism and confidence. On the other hand, when stock prices are falling, we call it a bear market. Because, bears attack with a downward swipe of their claws. Symbolizing disappointment, fear and despair. In this channel, our mission is to democratize finance, through education and information. If you want to get smarter about investing, and like this type of content, please press the like and subscribe button. The stock market has two vital purposes. The first purpose, is to supply capital to businesses so that they can fund and expand their operations. By issuing stocks, a public traded company can raise enormous amount of capital, without having to borrow money from banks, and other investors. Let's take the public trading company Alibaba as an example. In 2014, Alibaba sold approximately 320 million shares, for an average of $78 per share, and, raised $25 billion, in its initial public offering or IPO. At that time, Alibaba quickly became the biggest IPO in history. This process, allowed Alibaba to increase its cash reserves, and secured capital to expand, and make crucial investments on the company's future. Jack Ma, an English teacher, who founded Alibaba in 1999, became the richest man in China in the process. Second purpose of the stock market, is to allow stockholders, or people who own stocks, to participate in the profits of publicly listed corporations. Investors can profit from stock buying, in one of two ways. Some stocks, pay regular dividends to shareholders. A dividend, is the distribution of some of the company's earnings to its investors. They provide investors with predictable income, reduce risk, and, allow shareholders to profit from owning stocks, without having to sell them. Shareholders of dividend-paying companies, are eligible to receive dividends, as long as they own the stock, before the ex-dividend date. Companies will usually pay dividends on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis, or once a year. In today's unstable economic environment, dividend distributions provide investors with some needed peace of mind. Investors should look for companies that boast long-term expected earnings growth of at least 5% to 15%, have strong cash flows, and a low debt-to-equity ratios. The other way investors can profit from buying stocks, is by selling their stock for a profit, if the stock price increases. For example, had you bought a share of Tesla, the car manufacturer for $17 a share on its IPO, and, sold, when it reached its all-time high of $1,229, in 2021, you would have profited over 7,000%. 
To put this in perspective, the national average interest rate for savings accounts is 0.06% per year. Meaning, if the same $17 were deposited in a savings account instead, you would have profited a miserable 12 cents from it. Now, allow me to go back in the past, and explore how the stock market was created in the first place. Because, with a good perspective on history, we can have a better understanding of the past and present, and thus, a clear vision of the future. In mid-16th century, the city of Antwerp, Belgium, became essentially the European's trading center. Antwerp became an important commercial hub for international explorers and merchants. At the time, one of the most important trading families were the van der Bars. They owned the Bourse Inn, in Bruges, where each foreign merchants would have their own nation houses on the square outside of the inn. There, they would come out to trade, or, in bad weather, they would simply take refuge indoors to bargain over a pint of beer. In 1531, the old Bourse was given a new building conceived as a rectangular square, with galleries covered on four sides, built on top of the street intersection. The Bourse of Antwerp was the world's first commodity exchange built for this purpose. For half a century, this exchange was the focal point of European trade and the model for cities with similar ambitions. In 1570, Thomas Gresham, a representative of the English crown in Antwerp, established the Royal Exchange in London, making it the first purpose-built center for trading stocks. The East India Company was an English company that was created to trade in the Indian Ocean region. Throughout the 1600s, all products and goods acquired in the Far East were transported by sea. The merchant and trade business was considered highly risky at the time where ships were often threatened by severe storms and vicious pirates. To mitigate these risks, ship owners regularly look for investors to share the costs of such expensive endeavors. In return, investors received a portion of the profit realized if the ship made it back successfully. After the founding of the East India Company in London, importing corporations began providing stocks that effectively reflected a fractional ownership interest in the company. The United States didn't get into the stock market game until the late 1700s, when a group of small merchants made the Buttonwood Tree Agreement on Wall Street, New York City. These stockbrokers and merchants would meet daily to trade stocks and bonds, which led to the creation of the New York Stock Exchange. During the 1920s, the United States was going through a phenomenal economic growth. The electricity boom transformed the American way of life, especially in the transportation, communication, and entertainment industries. American companies were also helping to rebuild Europe, after the end of the First World War. The country was enjoying a period of low unemployment rates, and booming economy, which drove the stock prices up by almost 10 times, throughout the decade. When suddenly, everything came to an unexpected stop. When the stock market crash began on October 24, 1929. A day, which is still known, as the Black Thursday. The Dow Jones Industrial, a weighted index, that measure 30 prominent companies in the United States, fell 11% in the first hours. After the initial fall, investors panicked, and started selling more and more. But, the initial crash was just a first the symptom of a much larger problem. Because, the country went through a long and hard recession in the following years. Reaching unemployment rates as high as 23.6% in 1932. The ultimate stock market bottom, was reached on July 8, 1932 when the Dow Jones Industrial had lost almost 90% of its value. After the stock market crash in October 1929, the public lost the confidence in the United States markets. To re-establish confidence in the markets, Congress passed the Securities Act of 1933. And, in the following year, the Securities and Exchange Act of 1934, which created the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, for short, regulates the stock market. Its objectives are to protect investors, to ensure fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and, finally, to facilitate capital formation. Long has passed since the market crash of 1929. The Dow Jones Index has reached its all-time high benchmark in January 4th of 2022, when the index closed at 36,799 points. 
an increase of more than 89,000% since the market bottom of 1932. If you want to understand the stock market game, you need to understand the stock market players. Every day, trillions of dollars in transactions, take place in the financial markets across the country. But who are the market players, that are buying and selling? One of the funny things about the stock market, is that every time one person buys, another sells. And both think they are astute. First, understand that the stock market is composed of a primary and a secondary market. The primary market, refers to the market where securities are created. The secondary market, refers to the market where traders, trade previously issued securities, without the issuing company's involvement. I am going to quickly talk about the five key players that you should know well as an investor. The first key player is the investment bank. One of the most important things they will do, is to manage the initial public offering of the stock, or IPO which occurs when a company first decides to become a publicly traded company. Investment banks provide underwriting services for new stocks and sets the tone to how much these companies are worth. Investment bank is the main player in the primary market. Institutional investors invest money on behalf of other people. They are large organizations such as banks, pension funds, labor unions and insurance companies. Institutional investors make substantial investments on the stock exchange, and can heavily influence the price of a security. They are typically considered more sophisticated than the average retail investor. Other players we have to pay attention to, are the stockbrokers and retail investors. The stockbrokers, are financial professionals, who act as intermediaries between the stock exchanges, and the investors. They buy, and sell stocks, on behalf of investors. They operate in the secondary market. Keep in mind that, to access the stock markets, you need to have an account with a retail broker. Now let us talk about my favorite players. The retail investors. Retail investors, or the do-it-yourselfers, are non-professional investors, who buys, and sells securities in the stock market. With the intent to grow their money and reach their financial goals as quickly as possible. They represent about 15 to 25% of the average trading volume. And have to execute their transactions, through a stockbroker, or a brokerage firm. The Equity Research Analysts These securities analysts are professional investors, who do research on publicly traded firms, and try to predict, whether their stock will rise, or fall in value. They typically have an academic background in business, economy, or finances, and specialize in a small group of companies of specific industry or sector, to make accurate recommendations. And finally, the Hedge Fund Managers. I could not talk about the stock market players, without mentioning them. Hedge fund managers. Are financial companies. Or, an individual that employs professional portfolio managers, and analysts, to establish hedge funds. Hedge funds being an active managed investment pool. Hedge fund managers, buy and sell, significant volumes of stocks, and are important stock market players. Because when a well-known hedge fund, decides to invest in a particular asset, the stock's price often rises noticeably, due to the, the increased demand. Unfortunately, professional advice from those guys is not for everyone. They can only accept money from qualified investors. To be a qualified investor, you need to have an annual income that exceeds $200,000 for the past two years, or, a net worth that exceeds $1 million. Excluding their primary residence. What do you think? Are the barriers to become a qualified, or accredited investor too high? Should the SEC low the barriers? Or, do you think authorities should leave the barriers elevated? So that retail investors are not caught up in too risky investments? What are your thoughts? Leave some comments below. Here is an interesting fact. The United States market is dominated by institutions. They manage 62% of the total market. In China, the stock market is almost entirely comprised by retail investors. Where they manage 99.6% of the total market. The stock market, is filled with individuals who know the price of everything. But the value of nothing. The stock market, is made up of a network of exchanges. Including the New York Stock Exchange, and the NASDAQ. There are about 60 major stock exchanges in the world. The exchanges provide liquidity in the market. Meaning, 
there are enough buyers and sellers, so that trades can be processed efficiently, without delays, and without substantially impacting the stock price. Stocks with low liquidity may be harder to sell, resulting in possible losses, if you are unable to sell them when you desire. A stock exchange does not own shares. Instead, it acts as a market, where stock buyers, connect with stock sellers. The exchange, then, tracks the supply and demand of each listed stock, allowing investors to purchase, and sell these stocks among themselves. It's brilliant. Additionally, the exchanges ensure that all participants are verified, and remain compliant with the necessary rules and regulations. Leaving no room for default by any of the parties. To buy stocks, you need the assistance of a broker. You can't simply call the stock exchange, and ask to buy stocks directly. The easiest way to buy stocks, is to use an online platform. And to get access to an online platform, all you need to do, is to provide some personal information, and open a brokerage account. The process is very easy and straightforward. Once you have a brokerage account, you can deposit funds, and start investing. There are two categories of brokers. Full Service Brokers, and Discount Brokers. Full Service Brokers, provide a variety of expert investment research, and advices. In addition to comprehensive financial planning. On the downside, they are typically more expensive. Online, or Discount Brokers, typically provide the basic services. They are easy to use, and they allow you to buy or sell stocks for free. A major downside of Discount Brokers, is that you must do your own research. Fortunately, Nowadays many full-service brokers are also offering commission-free trading platforms. So, you can purchase and sell stocks for free, and have access to valuable investment research. Here is a list of some of the best free trading platforms for 2022. And, if you are looking for an easy-to-use, online discount broker for beginners, you may consider the following. What do you think? Have you ever used any of these brokers? If so, which ones do you recommend? and why? Leave some comments below. It's far better, to buy a wonderful company at a fair price, than a fair company, at a wonderful price. Many clever, and well-trained professionals, assess the prospects of companies whose stock, is traded on a stock exchange. For the most part, stock prices represent their collective judgment. The stock prices reflect, the aggregate opinion of investors on a company's current performance, and future prospects. When investors are optimistic about a company's performance, its share prices will rise. However, it is important to be aware that the stock market promotes capital to be allocated to companies with the strongest prospects at that specific time. However, the only guarantee we have is that things are always changing. And nobody can predict which businesses will flourish and which will fail, with certainty. Therefore, it is unreasonable to think, that markets will never make mistakes. Supply and demand, determine the price for each security. Or, the levels at which the stock market participants, are willing to buy, or sell, at any given time. Buyers, offer a bid. Or, the highest amount they're willing to pay. Sellers will offer an ask. Which is the lower amount they are willing to sell for? The difference between the bid, and the ask, is called the bid-ask spread. For a trade to occur, a buyer needs to increase his price, or a seller needs to decrease hers. This all may sound complicated. But computer algorithms do most of price-setting calculations. Pay attention to the bid, the ask, and the bid-ask spread, on your broker's website. And, try to purchase the stock for the best price possible. And remember, most successful investors agree that investors should focus on the business itself. And, not so much on the stocks. Billionaire entrepreneur, Elon Musk, advised that investors should buy stock in companies that makes products and services that they believe in. And, only sell, if they think their products and services are trending worse. He also said not to panic when the market does. What do you think? Do you agree with him? Leave some comments below. A stock market sector, is a collection of stocks that have a lot in common. Usually because they're in the same industry, or same business activities. We categorize stocks into sectors, so that it is easier to compare companies with similar business models. 
In that way, investors can understand when they are comparing apples with apples. And not apples with oranges. It is easier to compare companies with similar business models, and find out which company is making more money. Or, maybe, which company is gaining market share. Etc. The energy sector covers companies that do business in the oil and natural gas industry. Materials sector, includes companies that provide various goods for use in manufacturing. Industrial sector, generally involve the use of heavy equipment. Transportation stocks such as airlines, railroads, and logistics companies. Also, companies in the aerospace, defense, construction, and engineering industries. The consumer discretionary sector, refers to companies that provides goods and services, for which consumer demand depends upon the consumer financial status. On the other hand, the consumer staples sectors, refers to companies that provides goods and services that consumers need. Regardless of their current financial condition, they cover food, beverage, personal care, and tobacco industries. The healthcare sector includes companies that develop pharmaceuticals and healthcare equipment, as well as services. The financial sector cover businesses that are primarily related to handling money, such as banks, insurance companies, brokerage houses and consumer finance providers. The information technology sector covers companies in information technology that focus on creating software or providing services related to implementing technological solutions as well as companies that builds the equipment, components, and hardware that make the technology possible. The communication services sector include telecommunication services providers. Additionally, media and entertainment companies includes both older media, like television and radio, and interactive media via the internet and newer forms of communication. Utility sector comprises of companies specializing in making electrical power available to residential and commercial customers, as well as specialists in natural gas and water distribution. And finally, the real estate sector, which includes companies responsible for developing new real estate projects and managing them by obtaining tenants for various spaces within the project property. If you are interested in a certain sector, but are not ready to invest in a specific company within that sector, you can still participate in sector investing. Look for lower risk investments, like an exchange traded fund or ETF, or mutual funds that are specifically tied to that sector. The stock market sectors are broken out into three groups, based on how the companies behave during the economic cycles. These groups are cyclical, sensitive, and defensive. Basic materials, financials, consumer cyclical, and real estate, are sectors included in the cyclical group. Stocks prices in the cyclical group are highly sensitive to business cycles peaks and depressions. They follow the economy cycle of expansion, peak, and fall. They are heavily influenced by macroeconomic factors and the rise and fall of disposable income. During times of booming economy, their sales typically increase along with their stock prices. During the times of economic slowdown, their prices will fall. In the defensive group, also known as non-cyclical, you will find companies in the consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare are sectors. Companies on the defensive group are considered anti-cyclical stocks. They are not sensitive to market changes, mainly because they produce everyday utility products or things that are needed. Regardless of disposable income, companies in the defensive group are steady earners and often outperform cyclical stocks when economic activity is slow. The third group is known as the sensitive group. The sensitive group is composed of companies in the communication services, energy, industrials, and information technology sectors. The companies included in the sensitive group have only a moderate correlation with business cycles. As an investor, it's important to select stocks that can both boost your portfolio's income and also help you manage risks when the market is trending low. Stock prices fluctuate in response to the overall economy performance. Certain equities are more vulnerable to negative economic shocks than others. Sometimes, you need to adjust your strategies to adapt to these developments. On February 24, 2022, Kevin O'Leary, who is also known as Mr. Wonderful, claimed that crypto and the crypto market will become the 12th sector of the S&P 500. What do you think? Leave some comments below. 
Don't look for the needle in the haystack. Just buy the haystack. John Bogle. Stock market indexes are composed of a selection of stocks and are typically constructed by sector segregation or market capitalization. They are a powerful indicators of how the country's economies are doing because they are designed to reflect how stocks are performing. Some of the key stock market indexes in the United States are the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a price-weighted index that tracks 30 largest American blue chip stocks, the Standard and Poor's 500 Index, or S&P 500, measures the value of the stocks of the 500 largest corporations by market capitalization, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, or NASDAQ. The NASDAQ Composite Index. This index tracks stocks that are listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange and has a high concentration of companies in the technology sector. The Wilshire 5000 Index includes all the stocks in the United States stock market. Investing in a passively managed index is a great way to get involved in the stock market. It's low cost and has a proven track record. The average annualized return of investing in the S&P 500 stocks since adoption is just over 10%. The NASDAQ Copositive Index has done even better than the S&P 500, increasing 161 times since its introduction in 1971. On contrast, the S&P 500 returned 41 times. In fact, over the long term, it has been proved that passive investing index funds can outperform actively managed funds. Active managed funds employs professional portfolio managers to decide which underlying investments to choose for its portfolio. In 2008, legendary investor Warren Buffett took a $1 million bet. He bet that investing money in an index fund would make a better return than if you entrusted the same money with a hedge fund manager. Warren selected an S&P 500 index fund, which gained 125.8% over 10 years. While Protégé Partners selected five actively managed hedge funds, which gained the average of 36% in the same period. At that moment, Warren said that making money on the stock market does not require great intelligence, a degree in economics, or a familiarity with Wall Street jargon. What investors need instead is an ability to both disregard mob fears or enthusiasms and to focus on a few simple fundamentals. Courage has taught me that no matter how bad a crisis gets, any sound investment will eventually pay off. It is important to understand that investing in the stock market is not a risk-free activity. Risk is inherent in almost all real assets. Investors make investments in the hopes of predicting future returns, but these returns are not always exact. Higher expected returns come at a cost in terms of increased investment risks. During a market sell-off, investors who succumb to fear and panic may be eager to sell an investment for a low price. And, investors, who are too eager, may stick on to a security long after it has become overvalued. It is quite simple. If larger predicted returns can be achieved, without taking on additional risk, there will be a rush to buy high return assets, driving up their prices. The price of a stock, is largely influenced by investors' fear, and greed. Every investor experiences these emotions. But you may improve your financial success by being aware of your levels of greed and fear and policing yourself. A buy and hold investment strategy is the easiest way to build wealth from stocks. The secret behind this strategy is the power of compounding. Your total profit will be the result of the accumulation of the dividends and the stock's capital gains. Time in the market beats timing the market. We believe everyone deserves to have a financial education. Here at Investing Unlocked, our mission is to help educate one person at a time and empower people with the knowledge and tools to make better financial decisions. If you want to be part of our community, please like, subscribe, and share our content. Good investment and thanks for watching.